you know, um, there were people who, when I was going to law school, uh, some Christians would say, why would you do that? <laughs> like, why are you going yeah. to law school? Like, yeah. it was almost like, why are you turning to the dark side? Know. You know, like, yeah. Luke, turn back, you know? know. Like, yeah. um, and then I had people who are not Christians who are kind of like, what are, why, why, are, why are you here? You know, yeah. you're, a, you're a Christian, you're a follower of Jesus, you know, isn't law secular, isn't, yeah. you know, what, is that, what does that have to do with uh, anything to do with law? Yeah. So what I think what you're saying provides, uh, I think, a good segue mm-hmm. then for us to be able to maybe talk about an issue that is very current right now. Yeah. And uh, pertains to um, areas of expertise that uh, you have as well. Sure. And it's some, it's a case that's uh, going to be reviewed on an expedited basis, as mm-hmm. I understand, by the U.S. Supreme Court. That's correct. In regards to the executive order that was made um, by the Biden White House. Yep. Uh, President Biden B- White House uh, in regards to student loan forgiveness. Yes. Um. What is the lay of the land here and what's what's going on with this? What's at stake? Yeah, sure. So it might be good. For, and and I, you're exactly right, uh, Dean. I would say at start, it really does. Uh, this would provide an example of how what we do want to do at Liberty University School of Law is is we do believe the Bible speaks to everything. It's authoritative to everything it speaks to and it speaks to everything. Mm-hmm. So it's got principles that that are going to help us with everything. So does the Bible say anything specifically about student loan forgiveness? Well, no, not not uh, on its face like that. You mean that, you don't right? see Stafford loan yeah, no, in, not, in any I, verse I've of the scripture? I've never noticed oh, a, okay. yeah, or a Pell Grants or anything, but um, <laughs> okay. but but okay. the Bible has principles that then that then help us to understand these these types of things. So so absolutely true great uh, topic and so maybe just to give an idea uh, for if somebody's not heard, uh, uh, in August, um, President Biden announced what we might call the Biden Student Loan Forgiveness Plan. Basically, uh, the what that plan says is that if you if you have certain d- group of defined, we might just say federal student loans. So you've got federal student loans uh, that you'd be eligible uh, to have ten thousand dollars worth of those loans forgiven if you're single and you make less than one hundred twenty five thousand. If you're married, if it's if you make less than two hundred fifty thousand, um, and then if while you were in school you were eligible for Pell grants, you receive Pell grants, then you could get up to twenty thousand dollars worth of student loans forgiven, and that would be for each married couple as well. So each each the husband and the wife would each get ten thousand or twenty thousand forgiven. So that's that's the plan. That's what we're talking about. Uh, obviously, made a lot of news. Been in the news a lot, um, and. Uh, uh, not surprisingly, led to court challenges. Um, so uh, it was right in the run up to the election. Uh, so right before the midterm elections, led to court challenges. Um, there was uh, eventually two separate courts, uh, one in the Fifth Circuit, one in the Eighth Circuit, that ended up granting injunctions. So we ended up with a nationwide injunction uh, to keep the plan from going into effect. Um, At that point, about 26 million Americans had signed up uh, on the Department of Education's portal uh, for for potential student loan forgiveness. It's estimated that more than 40 million are eligible. Uh, So you can see that that shows us the the extreme size of this program. So at at $10,000 each for 40 million people, that that would be 400 billion um, and if some of those get twenty thousand, I've heard estimates running up to nearly a trillion dollars. Mm. The estimates on the low end are at a minimum of four hundred billion, mm. up to a trillion, more than the cost of Obamacare if it gets on into the high end. Um, so uh, these court challenges uh, came up. An injunction was eventually put in place, and um, it then made its way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, granted cert on that. And uh, then granted an expedited hearing, so the injunction is going to remain in place. Mm-hmm. Through Sur- the Supreme- search means the Supreme Court accepted it. Exactly right. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, they, yeah, the Supreme Court is. Um, uh, yeah, just in case people don't know, the Supreme Court mm-hmm. is uh, an appellate court, and they uh, you don't have an appeal by right mm-hmm. to the Supreme Court, except in very, very limited instances. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the Supreme Court, you have the by right, meaning you can demand that the Supreme Court hear your case or your appeal. Um, so they have to they have to grant you permission 
to hear it. So they did grant permission to mm-hmm. review it. Such an important case, not surprising mm-hmm. that they would. Mm-hmm. And um, they left the injunction in place, but they did agree to expedite the case. It, it can take years for a case to work its way through the courts. Um, so uh, actually, the, the Biden administration just filed their brief uh, a few days ago from when we're recording this at the end of this month, so January of 2023, the end of this month, the uh, respondents brief, so that's the, the the parties that were challenging the student loan forgiveness plan, their briefs will be due and oral arguments will be heard at the end of February. Um, so we should expect an opinion uh, from the Supreme Court no later than the end of June. So the Biden administration in response to that, to give the full lay of the land, they put, um, they there there had been a a, a pause, if you will, on student loan payments and student loan interest accrual, and uh, uh, beginning early in the pandemic, actually beginning in the Trump administration, the Biden administration had kept that in place. They were going to lift that with the student loan debt forgiveness plan. When that got put on hold, they put the moratorium back in place, and the moratorium is going to run until there is a a, a resolution of the case um, or. 60 days after June 30, 2023, if that was later, but we'll have, we should, everybody would expect we'll have an opinion before then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, <coughs> couldn't you imagine a lot of people across the country uh, who have, you know, these millions, these tens of millions, yeah. some 40 million, uh, you're saying, who have these loans? You know, higher education especially is expensive. A lot Absolutely. of times private education, even K through 12, is expensive. Yeah. Sometimes it's a major expense for a family. Sometimes it takes extraordinary sacrifice mm-hmm. uh, to support these things. Um, coupled with, uh, my understanding is most Americans don't pay federal income tax. Mm-hmm. And couldn't you not imagine a lot of these people saying, Boy, that sounds awfully good to me <laughs> to have ten to forty thousand between my spouse and me yeah. forgiven, uh, because I have this these student the student debt that looks like a mortgage, you know yeah. that that's like a big chunk of thing, you know. I, I could imagine a lot of them saying, "Sign me up!" Like yeah. the twenty eight million apparently who <laughs> who have oh. put put that out there. Yeah. Um, who would go like, boy, this sounds this sounds awfully good to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, almost anybody. I think uh, you know, if you if you get if if somebody forgives ten thousand dollars worth of a debt you owe, that's like handing you ten thousand dollars in cash, right? And uh, almost all of us would see that as a pretty positive development. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can absolutely understand why uh, many people view this as a great thing. What 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 could what could be wrong with it? Um, so you know, you might wonder then, well. Why would you be opposed to it? Right? Why would I be opposed to that? Or if somebody, I, I, I am opposed to it. Why would I be opposed to that as a measure of policy? Well, it's not because that I, I look out and want people to suffer and 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 you know be be poor or be in financial hardship. Uh, of course not. Did you um, have loans yourself? Yeah. Did you have well, educational? I did, I did have some student loans. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so you know paid, firsthand. Paid off, but I, I, you know what it's like I'm, firsthand to have debt. I do. Educational debt. I do okay. know exactly okay. what it what it's like to have student loan debts. Yeah. And I know the the joy and elation that Heather and I felt when we paid them off, you know, when we thought, oh, these student loans are gone. So absolutely true. So I don't want anybody to suffer. That's not really the the issue. Um, uh, so why why would I why would I be opposed to it then? Because um, I might ask you might say back to somebody, well why why are you being why are you being so stingy then? Uh, why not give Why not give everybody a million dollars? You know, make us all millionaires, um, right? <laughs> uh, right? And so when we say that, we laugh. We say, well, you can't do that. Okay, well, you know, why not? Right? Well, so so that points to to some real real reasons. I mean, first for me, and that'd be beyond the scope of this this talk here, but. Uh, you know, I would think biblically, God has given a jurisdiction, if you will, or, or a, a jurisdiction there meaning the power to speak the law, an mm-hmm. area of authority. Mm-hmm. God has given an area of authority to the various institutions that He created. So, God in the Bible, He created the well. We might call them governments as well. So there's self-government, right? So I've I've the duty to govern myself. Um, there's family government, right? God created the family. The family has a certain jurisdiction. There's church government, and so the church has a certain jurisdiction. And there's civil government, the, the civil magistrate, and it has a certain jurisdiction. And I would say that that's 
this type of student loan forgiveness is far outside of that jurisdiction. Um, beyond that, uh, there, there's some other significant reasons that, that I would, I would be opposed to that. Um, like what? Uh, well, so for example, um, what we're actually doing here, uh, you know, this, this, I think it really illustrates it when I say, well, why not give everybody a million bucks? You know, why not forgive every, all debts in America? Well, why, why can't we do that? Well, because we say where well, there's a limit, there's, we don't have enough money, right? So uh, there, there is a limit to how much we can do. And, and this, it reminds me of the guy, I think he runs for president. Um, I think his name's Vermin Supreme. So he wears like a boot on his head and he runs for president. And one year he actually came to Liberty's campus campaigning for president. And it's a, it's a spoof, right? It's a, it's a, he's a, it's a lark. Um, so uh, he, he's running so for it's president. Comedy routine, yeah, basically. it's comedy. Yeah. Okay, so he, okay. he came and uh, if I'm remembering right, that year, part of his, um, part of his platform mm-hmm. was uh, everybody would get a free pony. So everybody's going to get a free pony. <laughs> and so uh, he was asked, well, how are you going to pay for that? And his answer was, wait a minute, you must have misunderstood me. I, I said a free pony. They're free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for them, right? And it's sort of that idea. You know, it's, this is not free. So what we're actually doing is transferring wealth from one segment of society to another segment of society. Now, we, maybe we're going to do that through debt, and it'll just be we're going to make our grandkids and great-grandkids pay off these student loans that we're forgiven. Um, or maybe we're going to do it right now, right? And we're going to transfer um, wealth from one group to another. And it's an unusual way to choose to do that. Um, people with co- college-educated people are typically statistically healthier, wealthier so they're they're better off than their fellow americans normally when we think about a wealth transfer a justified wealth transfer we don't think just wealth transfers are justified when we transfer wealth from people who are maybe not as well off to people who are more well off and 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 so we're we're making a choice there and I would argue we're making somewhat of an arbitrary choice i mean i've read a lot of things about this and it's been pointed out many times um we're favoring a particular choice with regard to uh, education and maybe life career goals, we might say. Uh, for example, we're not talking about forgiving. Let's say you've got a, a, a young young man who straight out of high school decides, I don't want to go to college. I, I want to be a plumber. So he goes uh, to trade school, gets his, gets his degree there, and then he goes out and borrows money to buy an F-150 and tools so he can get his plumbing business off the ground. We're not talking about giving, forgiving F-150 loans or small business loans. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about forgiving a certain segment of the population's debt, maybe without good justifications of why we pick that group and not another group. In fact, it defies some of the things we would normally think about in that. Um, and then I would also say it creates a significant moral hazard here. Um, I, I think, I mean, I would rationally, if I was a student coming up and I see that debts, student loan debt has been forgiven like this, I would expect they're probably going to have to do that again at some point. So that would actually encourage me to take out more loans even on the expectation that at some point this is going to be, um, this is going to be repeated. Um, so that would be a group of reasons that I would pick out, maybe among others, that I would say this is bad policy. I would also say I have problems with the way it was carried out, um, and it's something that's become all too common in the way we do policy. Um, so almost everybody agrees, many, many people agree at least, even even on the left and the right, whichever side you would be on on our political divide, uh, that this was a, a political calculation. Um, So uh, President Biden had made a promise to forgive student loans and a campaign promise. Uh, It became evident that was not going to get through Congress. So he was not going to be able to get that through Congress. And so what he decided to do um, right on the cusp of an election that looked like was not going to go well for his party uh, was basically hand out a massive middle class entitlement. Um, You know, uh, one time, admittedly, but we just said these things are likely to have to repeat. Um, And and it could, you know, could be viewed as as political opportunism. 
It's also just a, a bad way to go about policy for our rule of law and constitutional order, um, uh, where you have a president who says, I can't get Congress to enact the policies I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scour the voluminous federal code, and I'm going to find some justification, no matter how weak, to say, I have the authority through an administrative agency to take this action that I can't get through Congress. And President Biden had actually recognized, he'd actually said he didn't have authority to do it, that Congress had to do it. Nancy Pelosi had said the president doesn't have authority to do it. Mm. Um, and so then, you know, massive change on that just at the right time to try to help the election. It's just a bad way to do policy. And it's a bad way to do policy, whether it's a president on the left, the right, or in the middle. Um, our constitutional order is not built on the president saying, I can't get Congress to do what they want, so I'm just going to do it by fiat. And that's really the position we find ourselves in. Um, and, and we see that in how there's been such a growth of these executive orders and executive actions on policies that, that, that can't get through Congress. So I have that complaint as well. So in terms of the constitutional system that we have, that it has to pass the House of Representatives, correct? the Senate, yep. by a majority each usually, and then it has to be presented to the president for signature correct. or veto. Yep. Uh, and if it's vetoed, two-thirds supermajority of both the House yep. and the Senate, you're talking about that constitutional system that this is sort of a bypass. It is. Yeah, it is. And we've seen that. We, we've, Like I say, we've seen gr the growth of that mm -hmm. in, in recent years, really, um, you know, in the 2000s. We've seen that in particular. And it's something that, that does pose a threat um, to, to our constitutional order. Um, now, I, I know that there may be, and I've even heard some Christians out there who would say, well, but shouldn't you be as a Christian in favor of this, though? All those things aside, all those things you just said, I hear all those. But as a Christian, shouldn't you be in favor of this? Because debt forgiveness is actually a, even a picture of the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. And and I would say, you know, amen to that um, in the sense that, now not that I'm going to agree with it, but amen that that debt forgiveness is one of the ways the gospel is pictured, right? We're, like the parable that Jesus shared. Yes. About the person who was forgiven mm -hmm. a debt that was greater than the gross national product of Palestine <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And then he was going after the fellow servant who uh, yeah. owed him a maybe close to a year's wages. Yeah, not, not, an ins not an insignificant amount. But it wasn't but, the gross national product correct. of Palestine. Absolutely. So I imagine some of these people are pointing to things like that yeah. and saying – yeah, what absolutely. Gives? Because what, what? yeah, you know the Bible. Explain yourself. The Bible says, <laughs> yeah. you know, right that that um, that I owe a sin debt that I can't pay. Um, you know, even I can't pay that sin debt with even with an eternity in hell. I mean that that's uh, that won't pay it off. Mm -hmm. So I'll be done. Mm -hmm. So that sin debt could only be paid by by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ um, on the cross, His substitutionary death and atonement, and then the resurrection. Um, so yeah, but, you know. Praise, praise God for that. Uh, you know, it's it's wonderful to be forgiven that sin debt. Um, and I've even heard uh, it analogized, this debt forgiveness plan analogized to that. Um, but there's really some important differences there. Uh, for example, when, um, uh, when we talk about Jesus, for my sin debt being forgiven by, by God because it was paid by Jesus— that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about that somebody willingly is paying these student loans off. I mean, if if I'll just take some people who've been publicly very in support of this. So that would be and even and even want the numbers to be higher, up to fifty thousand dollars. You know, so Elizabeth Warren or Chuck Schumer or Bernie Sanders. You know, if they were going to take their personal fortunes, they're free to pay off anybody's debt they want to, and that would be more of a gospel picture there. I, I agree with that. That would look more of a gospel picture, but that's not what's going on here. What's going on here is they're hoping to be generous with other people's money. So it's American taxpayers now or the American taxpayers in the future, and that's significantly different um, than, than the gospel. In fact, I, I find it a little bit offensive even to compare it to the gospel. I, I understand. I understand where they're coming from. Um, and what they're trying to argue there, 
Um, but but the, the, the debt forgiveness, this student loan debt forgiveness is not a picture of the gospel. And it is not um, in line with what God is, you know, God is teaching us and showing us through the gospel. You're perhaps you'd be emphasizing the difference in terms of the coercive aspect of Absolutely. taxation yeah. versus somebody giving something out of the generosity and kindness of their heart. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're exactly right. And it's as as we alluded to earlier, um, you know, th- this is this is not free. Somebody has to pay for this. Uh, the, the, there's there's no way for this to happen and magically be that that just went away. We just made this disappear. Somebody pays for it. So it's either going to be that the American taxpayers now are going to pay for it or in recent in, you know years to come, or we're going to pile it onto our national debt, uh, which means our grandkids and our great grandkids are going to be paying for it. Somebody has to pay for it. Um, and, uh, and, and in that regard, um, you're right, it's going to be by coercion. We're going to make some people pay for it. We're either going to make some people right now pay for it, or we're going to make people down the road pay for it.